This week we've been focusing on this issue of buoyancy, the issue of whether a fluid within a fluid or an, another object within a fluid tends to rise or tends to fall. And we've said that if the rise happens spontaneously and fairly dramatically, we have an unstable system. And unstable systems are characteristic of those clouds that we looked at at the beginning of the week with the billowing tops that are tending to run away with themselves, that are tending to run away with the process. And I'm sure we've each seen this happen. I don't know if you've ever thought about the, the challenge that exists for marine creatures. A large number of land creatures, of course, don't support themselves against the force of uh, buoyancy and air. They, they support themselves on the ground, but marine organisms often swim. And when they swim, they have a particular challenge to face. If you think about the fish that's swimming through the water, it's got a significant challenge because its body mass, its basic uh, muscles and its, its normal material is a little bit more dense than water. This means that a fish tends to want to sink to a certain extent if it didn't have compensation for that. And so fish do have compensation. It would waste too much of their own energy. It would require them to eat too much material if they had to overcome the problem of buoyancy all the time. So what a lot of fish have developed their special organs in order to be able to assist them to keep neutrally buoyant, to keep in that neutral, stable situation where they have no strong tendency to go up or to go down. And what they use to achieve that in many cases is called a swim bladder. A swim bladder is an organ within the fish that essentially is inflated and becomes a little bit enlarged in order to fill it with a less dense material so that the fish overall has neutral buoyancy, has no tendency to go up or to go down. But this actually creates a significant problem for the fish. The problem is this, is that that material inside the swim bladder is different from the water. It's got a different um, compressibility effect and a different physical properties. And if the fish goes up a little bit, there's a very strong tendency for that say, material of air to expand more rapidly than the fish expands. The danger with that, of course, is that a little bit of an upward motion is inherently unstable, and it could cause a greater upward motion, and all of a sudden the fish pops to the surface like a cork and explodes and is in tremendous um, distress biologically, probably won't survive. Fish overcome that problem in one very clever way. They tend to be a little bit biased towards being a little bit negatively buoyant still. So that if there's a fluctuation in the motion, they tend to sink more easily than they rise. And even if they rise a little bit, they don't exceed the limits and become unstable like the top of a thundercloud. So when you're looking at the water and you go to a stream and you see a fish, you might think of the surprising connection that exists between a cloud that's unstable or a thunderstorm and the problem that a fish faces when it simply swims. And both of them have to deal with the issue of buoyancy and both of them have to cope or will reflect to a certain extent this issue of stability.